Okay. Hi, good afternoon. On behalf of Panama, today, Ms. Linda Diaz and myself, Sylvia Hafez, will be presenting a little bit on the current situation in Panama regarding rare disease. So first, some background about Panama. Some quick facts about Panama. Panama has an area of around 75,000 square meters, square kilometers, I'm sorry, and approximately 4 million people. Its location is in Central America, right between Costa Rica and Colombia, right in the middle. We're bordering the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. Our currency is the US dollar. The languages that we speak are Spanish and some Indian dialects. And the government system is democratic. It's a democratic republic with a multi-party system. And our current GDP is 3% approximately. So the population distribution, around 1.5 million of people live in Panama City, Panama, and 60% of the country's urban area. The major urban area, of course, is Panama City, the capital. We have tropical weather all year round. Current health expenditure is only 8.3% of GDP. It's around $1,857 per capita pay based on purchase parity. Around, it's around $4.7 million and only 21.4% of government budget. So it's very low, um, very low for, for, for healthcare. Our health system is divided in three categories. We have public hospitals um, for those who are not insured by the countries that include Salud, uh, hospitals that are in um, remote areas, in Hospital del Niño. There is also the Caja de Seguro Social, that's the social security of anyone uh, who is employed in the country. And there's of course, private healthcare as well. And based on percentages, we calculate that approximately 240,000 Panamanians have a rare disease. But of course, we still do not have uh, data that, from the government. Okay. For the status of existing legislation, we can tell you that Panama have a law since 2014. It means it's six years ago. We promulgated our law for rare diseases, even though this law have not, has not been executed for different situations. The, right now, we are trying to have conversations with the Congress to do some modifications for the law, doing it more friendly for the exec execution based on the, the actual situation of the patients that there are more patients right now than six years ago. So we are all together uh, gathering the information that we need to do the best law for our country. The work has, has to be in, increased, increases, uh, we have this law complete to two councils, one exter external council and one internal council that work together to have the decisions of the medicines or, or the drugs they have to buy for the patients. But this procedure, it's a little bit complex for the, the, the risk of the patients based on the time they, they have to take to a decision. The current national activities and the areas of, of, of the emphasis. Right now, the rare disease are going on by GNOs, foundations, that are doing several activities for the patients that have a reduced economy in, in areas far away from the city. And they, they promote uh, the, the social awareness of the people for the things that they need, not just the medicines, it includes 
other things like mattress and the and the necessities of the of the patients in these conditions for for the distance. Uh, we also have other activities like the Teleton 2030 that have a, a funding for these kind of things in, in social securities. I think it's important also to, to point out that most of the activities that are being done are through private um, private foundations. They are the ones that help with economic support, with the diagnosis, with educating also medical medical personnel. And also there are two organizations that support um, rare disease affected patients. One of them is Senadis, that it is the secretary for um, um, handicapped, handicapped people and the infirm that is a center for rehabilitation that also give, give support to affected patients who may need this. Okay, so challenges, barriers, and obstacles to needs in the rare disease community. First off, as mentioned earlier, is lack of data. Right now, there is a census that is being planned for this year, and there is no plan to include a rare disease census in the census in the country. So we do not know exactly how many people are affected and what disease are more prominent. There is a lack of financial and social resources from the state and private companies. There is no budget, as Linda mentioned, no budget allocated for patients affected with, with rare disease. And, and because of the location, the different locations in the country, there's also no social support for patients affected and their families. Of course, one of the biggest obstacles is out-of-pocket costs to get a diagnosis and of course to get a treatment. The lack of education in the medical community in the medical community and social fields. A lot of the patients who have a rare disease that has some type of treatment do not know and do not have access to this treatment that can improve their quality of life. And of course, as Linda also mentioned, that the rare disease law has not been executed. To add to that, there is the accessibility to existing treatment, the language, as mentioned on the first part of the presentation. There are some parts of the country more remote, as you see in the picture, that they speak Indian dialect. And when they arrive to the hospital, they, they can't even explain what they're feeling. There's a lack of interest in promoting scientific research for rare diseases. There's also the geography and logistics. Panama, um, as we mentioned, only 68% of it is urban area. So public transportation is also very scarce. And most of the medical centers in the country that are equipped to treat patients with complex conditions are in the capital. So you can imagine that just getting to the capital is quite a challenge. The infrastructure in public health centers, especially in the most remote parts of the country is a big problem. And uh, again, an uneducated and uninterested medical community. The legislative and policy needs in research, regulatory or health care services. We can, we can say that in the legislative part, we need to create A national census, we need to create a rare disease department within Ministry of Health with a budget. Allocate budget for the effective designations and for scientist, scientific investigation and execute rare disease law. We also have uh, the healthcare services, bridge the, make the, this bridge the, or the, the gap between the pharmacies company and the government, because we have no access to exceeding treatments or clinical trials. Organizations of medical personnel and dedicated, are, and dedicated rare disease day for patients. Lack of equipment for diagnosis is needed in Panama. Also a, a lack of public transport, a law of public transparency in the in the in when the when we are going to buy the medicines because we don't know how to put on the price of the medicines or the therapies genetic therapies that we are buying for patients in research Sylvia regarding research it would be great to have different centers in the provinces and facilitate data sharing on number of patients and ex in existing treatments currently we only have seven geneticists in the country, which out of them, five are concentrated in the capital. And between them, they do not share information 
on what condition it exists and what number of patients. So creating a database would be wonderful. Partnerships for clinical trials with countries nearby in the region, as, as Linda was mentioning, to bridge that gap. Partnership with hospitals, Panama, one of the hospitals in Panama, for example, has a partnership with John Hopkins. We could partner with one hospital in the state to treat um, and study different diseases. And of course, allocate a budget for specific research in rare disease. Opportunities for collaboration. Pharma companies to get access to treatment and trials. There might be a great population here for a specific disease that we do not know about. To create diagnostic centers and lab. Most of the diagnostics are sent outside to the US or to Spain. So to get a good collaboration with a lab that could help with pricing would be wonderful to help speed it up. With International Rare Disease Organization for Educational Tools, many of the newly diagnosed parents or even patients themselves have no information on how to treat the disease and what's the, the natural history course. Collaboration with international institutions as well for information, treatment, and investigation, such as the NIH in the United States or in Europe. With rehabilitation centers that focus on treating rare disease so we can educate the personnel we have here on how to help the patients. With biobanks so they can share tissue samples, blood samples, to validate for research with neighboring countries. So we can also share good practices and experiences that are similar to our background, such as Colombia and Costa Rica, with leading local and international universities to help promote interest in rare disease and help educate future, future doctors and future medical students and scientists, with leading hospitals in America and Europe to help give these patients the treatment that they need. And of course, as, as a dream to create a leading rare disease institute in the region in Panama that can help implement, educate, and treat rare diseases in the region. Hello, Panamerica 2022. Okay, we think you should consider having the Air Call Congress in Panama next year because we are a good hub for logistics in flights, in hotels, and we, we, we think we can be the hub for the rare disease center location as we are for the world with the Panama Canal and with the banks, and with the, uh, with the banks, right? So we have this great weather the whole year yes. that we, and we can move for every part it's a good place for having a, a Congress because we have so many places near from the city to go on and to do the Congress and the networking reunions uh, before the, the Congress that it's very important for the friendship and, the, and the, the things that we need, like a tool for doing this big family in rare disease for, the, for Latin America. And I think another good thing to add is that we have the US dollar, of course, and that Spanish and English, in English in particular, is spoken in many places of, of the country. And after the Congress, you can all take a, a beautiful vacation in uh, one of the islands near, nearby. And um, we, we have a shared dream where we want Panama and other countries in the region to be able to have access for treatment, education, and resources for rare disease patients and their family, because alone it's true, we are, we are rare, we are orphan diseases, but together, if we unite together and work together, I'm sure we can find a way to, to thrive, not only as, as a country, but, but as a region and as a whole. Thank you very much. <laughs>